Let's move on here to Owen. And Owen, I believe, has a non-hand call. Is that right, Owen? How's it going? Yeah, hey, Mark. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Awesome. Yeah, this is a non-hand question. I was just, uh, it's like an etiquette rules question. Okay. What What's the size of the game? Oh, this is a 3-5 game. 3-5, where is it played out of? Out of uh, Fortune Poker in Renton, Washington. Okay, so it's one of these, like, max bet games, right? Max it's bet spread per street. Limit. Yeah, spread, yeah. spread so limit. 300 max bet. Okay. Four bets per street. Four bets right. per street. And you are not in the hand, or you are in the hand? I'm not, I'm at the table, but I folded. I'm okay. just watching the hand. Okay, and, and what what is... And it gets limped around preflop, right? Mm-hmm. All right, so limped around preflop. And what's the flop? The flop is the three of clubs, mm-hmm. three of spades, and the nine of diamonds. Three of clubs, three of spades, nine of diamonds. And what's the action on the flop? So the big blind bets 20. Okay. Uh, both limpers, the middle position, and the button both call. Okay, so two limpers call. Yep. Turn comes out the jack of hearts. Okay. Um, the big blind bets 50. Okay. And then again, both limpers call. So both limps call. It's typical like live poker. It looks like the pot's probably like maybe like 220 or 210 or something like that, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. it ends up, yeah. yeah. So it ends up being about 500 after the river. Okay, and what's the river? River is the 10 of diamonds. Okay. The big blind bets 150. Big blind bets 150. Okay. Yep. Middle position calls and the button folds. Mid position calls, button folds. Okay. And? And so both players go to table their hands at the same time. They don't really wait for each other. Um, and the big blind table is three, six offsuit, which by the way, back. so he tables three, six, but the kicker does not play, right? He's going to chop, not play, he's no. going to chop with any other three, right? Okay. Exactly. Yep. yep. Mm-hmm. Um, and then as the middle position player is flipping his cards over, he flips over the five of hearts and then somehow the other card gets stuck to his finger or whatever, and it falls off the table into his lap. So and- mid position tables of five of hearts. And then did, can people see the other card? No, the other card is in his lap. In his lap, okay. Right, and so mm-hmm. he quickly reaches down, grabs it, and throws down the three of hearts. Okay, so he has five three. Right, so they have the same hand. Okay, so it should be a um, chop, right. And, and somehow the dealer didn't notice this, and he starts to chop up the pot. Didn't notice what, that the card was in his lap? Yes. So why would the card being in his lap have anything to do? What what's what, what's happening here? Is there some rule that I'm not aware of at this card room? Well, in this card room, yeah. If the, if your cards go off the table, your hand is dead. Do, and that, inc- that in, does that include does that does that include on your lap? I've heard that in some places, if the card gets onto the ground, it's dead. But here, I guess they interpret it as if it goes into his lap, it's dead. So I I didn't know for sure. I've seen people. I've seen once before some guy was sitting in like the corner, like the seven seat, and he tried to throw his cards into the middle and they hit the, the shuffler, right? And just sort of like bounced awkwardly onto the floor. Mm-hmm. And uh, and they said his hand was dead. And in this room, if a card goes on the floor and mm-hmm. the dealer doesn't pick it up, they have to bring a new setup. I'm okay. not sure if that's the case everywhere. Okay. Um, but so the dealer chopping it up the hand. And I. But, but I'm saying that if the card goes into your lap though here, it's dead as well? Yes. That's the rule. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so um, so this is really where the question comes up of, as the, the dealer didn't notice this, he's starting to chop up the pot, and I sort of say to him, I was like, hey, is that okay? Um, and before the dealer can really say anything or even I, like, tell him what happened, the player then says, oh, no, no, it just fell in my lap. Okay. Okay. Um, it's, 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 it's not a problem. It's, you know, it's, it's fine. Okay. Um, and so the, the floor man is actually standing right there this mm-hmm. whole time. He's, he, they're also the chip runners in this room. So someone else is buying chips. Okay. Um, and the dealer goes to the floor, tells him what happens. The guy explains, he admits, he's like, yes, it did go off the table, but it just went into my lap. It didn't go onto the floor. Right. Um, and the floor says the hand's dead. Okay. And the pot goes to the big blind. Let me let me uh, let me guess what happens next. The guy gets mad at you for saying, "Why did you say that the hand went? Why did you say that the card went into my lap? You weren't in the hand." Basically, but, but before that, the the guy says to the floor, the middle position player says to the floor, "Can we split the pot?" Okay. Then the floor says, "You guys, you know, it's your money. You can do whatever you want." Um, 
And then the, the big blind refuses. He says, no, you made a mistake. This is my pot. I'm keeping it. So did the guy in mid position get mad at you? He did. Yeah, yes. yeah. This is a really interesting one because, <laughs> you know, I have very, very strong feelings about people tabling their hand, right? And, you know, I, I think the general public has sort of come around to my view, although there are some people that still think that, like, you know, that if you're not in the hand, you shouldn't say anything, where I say, and it's, it's clearly actually written in several types of uh, original sort of poker rule books that if somebody tables their hand and the pot is sort of shipped to the wrong person, it's your duty to speak up. It's your duty. But on the other hand, if someone's just like holding their hand up and they don't say anything and you tell them that they have the winning hand, that's really it, that's in really bad form, really bad etiquette comes up sometimes and hold them. I see it a lot more in Omaha high low because people can't read their hands and somebody's trying to find a low. But <laughs> this is a situation where we're not dealing with tabled hands. We're dealing with like a rule where if the card goes off the table, the hand's dead. But because it was so quick and it went in the guy's lap, nobody noticed it. But you spoke up and said, hey, the card went into his lap. Right. Is it so your, I, I is it your duty thought. to do the question is, is it your duty to do that? Right. And so that was sort of, uh, I had the same sort of thought as, as you did, right? Where <laughs> yeah. my sort of ideal, um, of one to speak up is if the dealer makes a mistake, right? Like I think the player should speak up, right? Exactly. Like, like if the dealer reads right. two hands wrong and starts pushing the pot the wrong way, right? I think everyone at the table has a duty to speak up and say something mm -hmm. as opposed to if a player makes a mistake and, you know, mucks a winning hand. You shouldn't do anything about that. So in the moment, I sort of interpreted this as like, okay, well, this is a mistake that the dealer made, um, not a mistake that a player made, yeah. and therefore I should say something. I don't know what the answer is. I'm sure that we're going to get some YouTube commenters in here. And I would say that, let's say that like only 20% of people disagree with me when I say it's your duty to speak up when um the pot's being pushed right to the wrong player um when all the hands are tabled i'm going to guess that the youtube comments are probably going to be the other way on this one that 80 percent of the people should say are going to say that you shouldn't have said anything uh i understand i mean you you laid out your logic sound logic right mm -hmm. if you were to ask me what i would have done i pro first of all i i don't play in a room i don't i don't think that yeah, there's any not that I know of. So whatever room that I would be playing in, I wouldn't know what the rule is. So I wouldn't say anything, you know, for going back to my days at commerce, I don't know if a card went in someone's lap, if it was dead. I don't know if I've ever seen that before, to be honest with you. I remember the whole, this stupid thing, like in, um, there's a world series rule that they had to change. I think to, during the middle of the series where if a card went off the table, like they were giving a one round penalty and, uh, like in a 10 K heads up, like, you know, people would go to muck their hand and it was eat, sometimes I think in one of the championship matches, like somebody mucked their hand and they would have been like mucked out of the tournament or something like that. Or it was happening quite often where if a card went off the table, it was like some, or some time penalty or something like that. It wasn't a round cause that would have been heads up would have been only two hands, but it was like some t ridiculous time penalty. I don't, first of all, personally, I'm, I'm not a huge, huge fan of that rule. The whole like, if the card goes off the table, it's dead. Like, I, I, I think that there's some nuance here where you could say possibly like if somebody mucked their hand off the table, it's absolutely dead. But when the card sort of gets to showdown, like when all the action's complete at the end and somehow when somebody, you know, goes to show down their hand, and this might happen like one out of like 10,000 times, like you flip your hand over and like one of the cards like goes on edge and rolls off the table. Personally, I don't understand why that is why that would be auto dead if they could identify what the card was. I think it's one of these situations where, and I don't know if that was the rule of commerce because, like, it's one of these situations where if you told the floor guy what you had, right, and 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 that was the card on the floor, right, and then the floor guy could look at the rest of the deck. You know, it's like one of these things that could be easily resolved. Let's say that I had the winner and one of my cards went off the table and I knew what the other card was, and I told the floor. That's my card. Floor goes to the table. He looks at the card. That's the card. Then he takes the stub in the deck, counts all the cards, and that's the card that's missing is the card that's on the ground. I don't know why that can't be resolved. I'm I'm not 
not that that's really the issue here, because I know that is what the rule is, what you're saying in in your spot, but I don't know if I would have said that. I'm not going to get on you for that. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't have a clear-cut answer for you. It is an interesting type of situation where I do feel very, very strongly that you should speak up when somebody's cards are not tabled. And what you are saying is, is that that's a dealer mistake, or excuse me, when someone's cards are tabled and the dealer's pushing somebody the wrong pot, right? That's a dealer mistake. And you're saying that this is also a dealer mistake because the dealer didn't see the fact that the card went off the table, right? Am I summarizing your point of view? Yeah, I think so. And, yeah. I, and I think, you know, you, you did describe, uh, I, I agree. I think it's a dumb rule. You know, I think in theory, somebody could like, you know, have a card in their lap that they would use to cheat. But like you said, they could just count out the whole deck and, and figure out if they did that or not. Um, but yeah, that that's sort of the idea of, of was I, I don't know if in the wrong is the right term or it wasn't my duty to speak up or. I mean, or, listen, you know, I'm pretty laid back at the table. Like if that happened to me and you spoke up, I probably, I wouldn't personally get mad at you for saying that about my hand, but there's a lot of people that would get mad. And then other people in the callers are saying that like, if, if the guy in the blind had any class, he would have just chopped the pot up. Right, and that's that's what I said to this guy too. I was like, "Hey, man, I'm sorry that I said something and that it cost you the pot. But if it was me, I would have I would have chopped it with you, no problem." John McGuire in the live chat says, "This is one case that you let a minor infraction slide. Don't be that guy, quote unquote." Um, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's a, it, you know, it's it's a, it's an interesting. Justin Case has agreed the dealer makes an error. All players have an obligation to speak up. Yeah, that's a, that's one that I haven't necessarily thought of. I think they probably should have chopped the pot, but. The guy in the blind has every right to take the pot, just like right by the, the rules of that. Just, of by, that just game. by the rules, but sometimes you know, sometimes we do things to make the game straight and make the game friendly. But it's an interesting yeah. one. Th- I, thank I you. I got sort of basically fifty-fifty reactions from other people I talked to around the room. People yeah. are saying, you know, you weren't in the wrong, but I might not have done it. And then some people saying, like, oh yeah, you have to say something. So yeah, well, interesting. Thanks Hopefully, for the call. Uh, it doesn't come up again. Yeah, thanks for the call, Owen. I appreciate it. All right, thanks, Bart.